scrum half again. Baggett gives it to Taylor. Oh, a nice step from Taylor, and again. Taylor looks for the offload. Irvin Hest and I just a metre short. Fed to Baggett. Baggett, lovely pass. And it's really not with the opening try from Elrose in the 21st minute. A good score from Elrose, Brian. Yeah, a really good score from Elrose. It's the first time they've really kept the ball for, for long periods. and It's been a little bit scrappy the first 20 minutes, but that's the first time they've really kept it. Put a little bit of width in it. Good to see the front five. You know, Jamie Batty getting the ball, stepping, beating a player on the inside. So, you know, they're, they're moving players. There's Richard Taylor just stepping. Richard's a really good step, a good, strong ball carrier. Um, and then keeps the ball alive. You look at Neil Auburn Hess, the ex Watson schoolboy, coming in there just keeping the ball, and then Jason Baggett just getting the ball off the right hand side. And because the Watsonian's defence becomes so narrow, it's a simple little pass over the top for the first score of the game. So, Ruri not Tobermory born, product at Highland Rugby Club. And uh, the opening score. And a well worked try as well. Unsuccessful with the goal kick attempt. Ian Moody, good skill. Pass not going to hand though. And it's snaffled by Angus Duckett. Ewan Scott finds space again. Back goes Godsmark. Oh. Watsonian's quick chase. Trouble here. Hacked on. Opportunity now for Watsonians. Fed to you and Scott. Scott gives it to Duckett. Duckett. And we've got a score for Scott McLeod, I think, for Watsonians. Watsonians committing a lot of men to win that ball. It's collected by Jackson. Jackson to Baggett. Baggett gives it to Godsmark. Godsmark trying to get step going McAndrew feeds it to Batty Batty barrels forward breaks the first tackle space now for McAndrew onto the narrow side it's Jason Baggett Baggett to Jackson Jackson to Rooney Knott and Rooney Knott for his second try and it's Melrose to regain the lead in the shadow of half time, Brian. Yeah, really good score, really good. It comes from a, a, actually a counter attack from Melrose. A huge, a big difference in the work rate for, in the backfield there. You look at Godsmark getting in the backfield, he, he, he makes a lot of space, that's why they attacked up the short side. And then they get a little quicker ball, they're on the front foot. Here we go, Jamie Batty, great carry, just getting in behind. Really difficult tackle for Christie to make because of the. The, the speed of the, and how hard the players running. Good decision from Murdo McCandre to go short side. Um, we get good running lines from Jackson, Jackson. and then um, Baggett. Jason Baggett runs a short side as well. And then he looks to offload in to, to Rudy Not to Pat Jackson getting his second touch to Rudy Not. Is that Rudy Not scoring his second try? Good work by the standoff and fullback. Good combination. Good shot of the scrum here. Watsonians. Been told to use it. Dodds feeds. Oh, got to look after the ball. McAndrew, a chance to counter. It's picked up by Jackson at full tilt. Jackson off his right foot, gives to McCann. McCann, and he's in. Good finish by the winner. Yeah, very, very good finish from Ross McCann. Yeah, that's the one thing that Ross McCann is good at. You know, in a short space, he's very, very good, good on his feet. Melrose getting through, being able to kick through and having a five metre line out. Talking of uh, line out and the opportunity to pinch ball, it's Jamie Batty battering forward. McAndrew, Baggett, Jackson, and it's a bonus point try for Craig Jackson and Melrose. Right at the death in this BT Premiership match. Yeah, look, the Melrose players will be delighted to have that score. They have, you know, they've, they've plucked away, they, they made that decision earlier on not to kick the, the goal at 20 points to seven. Bag it then. Sweet connection from the right foot. Referee Dan Jones blows for full time. Melrose win this BT Premiership match by four tries to one, 24 points to seven. Um, 
deserved, I would have said, under the circumstances. Forwards worked very hard, and, and territorially the advantage was Melrose. They also, I thought, um, used the ball probably better out wide. A bit scrappy at times the second half, Brian, but uh, the, the right result at the end of the day. Yeah, I would say the right result. I think, you know, to get the four tries as well, I think the, the amount of possession that Melrose had, uh, they deserved their, their victory today. Joined post-match here at Marseille by Melrose second row, Lewis Carmichael. Lewis, pretty scrappy, but I guess you'd be very pleased with the four try bonus point. Yeah, very happy with the four try bonus point. You know, obviously, tough place to come on my side. Um, it was really scrappy in the first half, you know, balls going everywhere. But, uh, nah, the second half was much better. We came out, you know, we got a, a bit of a mouthful at half time. You know, we need to come out um, and get some points on the board kind of thing. So, that nah, was good. I think we did that in the second half, you know, 24-7 final score. So, five points away, you know. We'll take that any day. Pretty disappointing. Um, however, I thought we I thought we fronted up a lot more um, last week. We had a lot of work ons off the back of last week. Um, made improvements in some areas, and some areas we need to improve more on. I would think that's probably my, my summing up of the game. You, you need momentum. You need um, you need you need the ball, and uh, I think I think it's difficult. You know, difficult to get that momentum, perhaps when you know it swings your way and you you don't retain it. So, uh, I think I think that's obviously a bit of a, a work on from us. We start our roundup of the other games in the BT Premiership at Megatland with the match between Muir and Glasgow Hawks. Hawks came into the game as league leaders, and they notched up the first try of the game, courtesy of Tommy Spinks. Muir replied straight away, flanker Matt Walker completing a fine move for the home side. Kerr Gossman added a second try for Hawks, before Jordan Edmonds again clawed one back for coach Peter Wright's team. The sides added one more try apiece before the break, Brendan McGrorty for the visitors and prop Ross Dunbar for the team from Megatland. At the break, the teams were tied at 22 all. Into the second half and Muir gifted Hawks a score as Robert Beatty intercepted a long pass and raced home from 65 metres. George Horn notched up another breakout try for the league leaders and there were two further tries for Hawks, one for Grant Stewart and a second for Tommy Spinks. An entertaining game from start to finish. Full-time score, Burnhamuir 28, Glasgow Hawks 48. Ten tries at Megatland, at Millbrae, Ayr and Stirling County continued the trend. George Hunter scored first from the home side before County hit back. Matt Lamb found space wide right to go over in the corner. Another breakout try soon followed. Some good link-up play put Ayr on the back foot. Ross Jones spotted the lack of cover in behind, recovering his well-judged grubber for the score. Ayr hit back, this time centre Ross Curl releasing Richard Dalgleish. Ayr's forwards were in the ascendancy. Leah McPherson profiting from an advancing scrum.
The final try of the day saw County winger Craig Pringle touching down in the corner. Final score Air 46, Stirling County 22. At Goldnaker, the teams could only muster up a measly eight tries between them. Final score, Heriot's 38, Gala 19. The final match of the weekend saw Curry away to Hoyk. Again, both sides played some entertaining rugby with plenty of tries. Curry had a chance to seal it at the end. Standoff James Bywater just missing after Hoyk had infringed at the conversion. No, 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 no. Time off, right? There was at least three people here shouting as you ran out, right? Totally unacceptable. We're going to have another kick, so go back behind the line. From the sideline. Go back behind the line. It's not for discussion. Final score Hoyk 27, Curry 26. Welcome to the BT National One Roundup. We're here at very famous ground, Rayburn Place, home of Edinburgh Academicals, and they take on Stuarts Melville this afternoon. Stuarts Melville still looking for their first win. Edinburgh Ackies have started the season with four wins out of five, but it is a derby and anything can happen. Let's join our commentator, Stuart McFarlane. It's Edinburgh Ackies with home advantage for this capital derby as the ball boys warm up. And Edinburgh Ackies led on to the field by Jamie Soule looking for their fifth win of the season 
up against it. Stuart's Melville side, led out by their skipper Duncan Wood, still awaiting that first win of the season. Aki's then in their pre-match huddle, just preparing to get us underway. A cool, crisp autumn afternoon here in Edinburgh, and Edinburgh Aki is immediately winning ball from the kickoff. Nestle through the hands, the backs looking to link up early on. Good work here by the half-back pairing on to Chalmers once more, taken on by Appleston, just on the angle, feeds the ball inside to Josh Becker. And the referee just spots the infringement there, just outside that 22, an early opportunity here for Ackes then. It's struck well, it's sweet and true, and Andrew Bell opens the scoring this afternoon here with a penalty. Ackes then building from just outside the 22, Chalmers, boot to ball, oh that's charged down, an excellent piece of play there from Jack Haney, opportunist score for the outside centre, Stuart's Melville then replying with an early try, watch this again, a good strong right arm here from Haney, just to block the kick, and he was in for the score. There's the conversion then, that doesn't look too bad from here, off the uprights, Stuart's Melville then with their tails up, Still looking for that first one of the season, and it would be rather sweet coming here against their local rivals, Edinburgh Aki's. The referee, though, had spotted an infringement in that latest piece of play. And Stuart Melville will have the chance once again just to extend their lead. Michael Hanning then. That's again a good connection, and it's over another three points for the visitors. Porteous in position, just to recycle, finds Hanning again. Inside the 22, Stuart Melville with good possession here. Back the fly half takes it on now to fullback Murchie. Murchie cuts inside, onto Hanning again. Hanning, where's the Edinburgh? He's defence. He sails through and he's going to be underneath the posts for a second try in this first half for Stuart Melville. And we'll watch this again, he finds himself in acres of space there, a misunderstanding between Sam Gibson and Josh Pecker. A gap opened up and Hanning, well he was delighted just to glide his way through for the score. Hanning can convert his own try, which he does. A handsome lead at this stage then for Stuart Melville, close to the interval. And Barak is then building on the edge of the Stumel 10. Oh, excellent angled running here from Matt Cooper on the right wing. Cooper's eventually tackled there by Porteous and he's slowed up, and, but the referee up with play just calls it back for an earlier infringement. Appleston kicking to the corner. So it'll be a throw in, taken down nicely there by Winks. The drive on here now. In Brackies have got a big, solid, strong pack and they're driving towards the line. All three front row players involved here. They crash over right on the stroke of half time. You can see what that means to the Edinburgh Aki's players. And it's Clement Lacour, the loose head prop, who comes up with the ball and takes the congratulations of his teammates. And as we watch this again, it's all about the power of the Edinburgh Aki's forwards here, driving on in the midst of it all. Clement Lacour touching down for his fourth try of the season. Andrew Bell then. Decent right foot connection, but back off the uprights. And there's the referee's halftime whistle. 15 8 then for the visitors, Stuart Melville. Arkey's early stages of the second half, looking to build a lovely pass inside there to Callum Black from his fly half. Love goes in once again. Drennan now takes the driving run on, up to within three metres of the line. Quick recycle ball required here. Lacour has a drive at the line as well but he's caught just a metre short, great defensive work here from Stuart Melville, Love goes in once more, feeds the ball out, they've men on the outside, including the second row, Sam Gibson, who touches down, and immediately says to his teammates, come on guys, let's get going. Drennan here, great drive from the number eight, but equally good tackling there from the backs of Stuart Melville. Lacour had a go, was looking to just touch the pads of the post there, but was driven sideways, and then it was eventually out to Spearman on the wing, Gibson to touch down. Conversion from out right. Bell, again that's a decent effort. And this time it's good, a converted score to bring the game level at 15-all. Stuart Melville, close to halfway. 
And that's a loose pass there, a big collision as Cooper and Murchie come together. And the Stuarts Melville fullback sticking a sore one here. You can see Cooper was fully committed as he clashes in with Murchie. Nice interchange and passing taken on there by Gibson. The big second row goes to ground just over the 10 metre line. Love once again on to his fly half. Jamie Soul, great driving run there from Soul. Rapstad trying to slow him down. Love back in position again just to recycle the ball, but Sumel not releasing the tackle player. So conceding the penalty. Here's Andrew Bell from just outside the 22, and another three points for Ed Marakis from the restart. Michael Hanning then, right on halfway, high into the Edinburgh autumn afternoon sky. Oh, and here's an opportunity straight off for Poulsen, the Swedish internationalist, and he's caught well there by Drennan, just shot off the Edinburgh's line. The move then just breaks down. That was uh, certainly promising there. Aki's defensive throw, Callum Black, and that goes over the heads of everybody. Stuart's Melville now with a great opportunity to get points in the board here. And again, Rapstad, who's been in amongst the tries all season, has he been awarded the score? No, a shake of the head from the referee. I don't think he released the ball there, just shot off the try line. Rapstad going into contact, two, three players from Edinburgh. He's trying to slow up the Swedish internationalist. It looked good from Rapstad's point of view. Inside's exchanging penalties midway through the half. Sidak then crashes into Hanning, continues the driving run, nice little offload well. And Stuart Melville on the back foot as Edinburgh is trying to build with Neil Aitken. A replacement who's made a, an impact already. Love with the pass inside. Again, the halfback's doing good work here. Comes now to Chalmers on towards the fullback. And that move just breaking down on the edge of the Stuart Melville 22. Love. On now towards the hooker, Callum Black. Neil Aitken's up in support once again. Love goes in again. Appleson, he's got a man outside him. That man is Matty Cooper, and Cooper's going to be in for a score. With five minutes of the half left to play, a smile on his face. Watch this again. Great work from the Edinburgh Aki Sukas, taken on by the replacement Neil Aitken. Still had a lot of work to do. Love was quick there to find Appleson. Appleson then out to the right winger who finds himself on the left flank. And a challenge coming in there from Sean Murchie. I think he's hurt himself trying to slow down Cooper. Love. Quick recycle ball onto his captain, Jamie Soul. And Jamie Soul's going to be in for the bonus point try. Two tries in the space of two minutes. A great finish for Edinburgh Aki's. And as we watch this again, great drive there from the flanker, taking it quickly from his scrum half, and there was no stopping Jamie Soul. Stuart Melville looking for something then before the end of the game. This is promising up towards that 22. Again, quick recycle ball. Hanning, oh, that's a long loose pass and intercepted by Cooper. He tried this earlier on in the game. He's got acres of space to run into and Cooper's going to ghost in for a third try in the final five minutes of this match. The long loop pass here from Hanning, trying to find Seb Trotter, a flailing arm, but Matthew Cooper intercepting, grabbing the ball, had more than half the length of the field to run. Bell with the kick, which is good, and that's the close of play. Final score, Edinburgh is 42, Stu Bell 18. Well, Jamie, uh, you got over the line, but at half-time, things were looking a little bit dodgy, let's say. Yeah, they came out a lot harder than we expected them to, and they matched us physically, but guys brought it back together. Good at the end, and we got our bonus point win. And you were blooding a few new players today as well. Yeah, we had a couple of new boys on the team, a couple of guys away, but they stepped up and we played well at the end. Performance today was, well, <laughs> a billion times better than last week, if I have to say. Uh, first half was awesome, second half was good from us as well, but uh, intensity just dropped a wee bit. Uh, so I think that got us, but we overall we played a really good game uh, and uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable, yeah. Of course, Embarakis, uh, that's what, five wins out of six now, so things yeah. are, are looking up for the club here. Yeah, they are looking good. Um, just got to keep doing that, try to get through the rest of the season unbeaten and we'll do well. Jimmy Winks, and it surely won't be long before Stuart's Melville break their duck. Well, let's look at the other BT National 1 games and an exciting game at Ruby's Law, which witnessed 10 tries. Selkirk back to winning ways with a brace each for Darren Clapperton and Craig McDougall and 17 points for Aberdeen's Sam Nudston. 
That win for Edinburgh Ackies looks good on paper, but with five minutes to go, there was just three points in it. Ackies running in three converted tries right at the end to put the gloss on the score and pick up a try bonus point. A high-scoring affair at Braidholm saw GHA overcome a spirited How of Fife team, Grant Mollison, the star of the show, with a hat-trick of tries. Jed Forrest are the only team from the 46 in the four top leagues in Scottish rugby to win all their games so far, and they were comfortable winners over Dundee High. The big match of the day saw Marr pull off a win against previously unbeaten Falkirk. It was Marr's 15th home win in the league, Selkirk the last to beat them back on Valentine's Day 2015. The Bickerstaff brothers once again doing some damage both on the score sheet and Kyle Valance voted man of the match. Musselburgh chalked up their biggest win of the season, posting 60 points on Hamilton, scoring nine tries in the process, eight of them by different players. And the other one is still a bit of a mystery to all, even at the club. But for the moment, we'll put it down as a forwards drive over try. Credit to Hamilton, they rallied for a try bonus. So for the first time this season, no try for Jacob Adamson. And that means several players playing catch-up, including Andrew Wilson, Callum and Gregor Young, Scott Bickerstaff and Darren Clapperton, who all scored on Saturday to lift themselves up to six for the season. Robbie Shira-Gibb joins Harry Russell and Iseo Matagachi on five. In the points list, Liam Brims is the first to break the 100 barrier, but he's only 12 ahead of Jed's Robbie Yorston on 89, and Colin Sturgeon is a clear third on 80. Lower down, Andrew Bell of Edinburgh Ackies breaks into the top 10 for the first time with 41 points. In the team tries list, Jed Forrest are now clear leaders after another six tries at the weekend. Marr joined Falkirk in second place, and Musselburgh's nine puts them in the top half of the rankings. The table looks very different after last week. It's so tight in the top four that one loss has sent Falkirk crashing down from first to fourth, while Jed Forrest's win puts some two points clear at the top. Marr are up to second on points difference from Edinburgh Ackies and third, quite congested between fifth and ninth, but Hamilton, Howard Fife and Stumel all have ground to make up. Next week, the Falkirk v Jed Forest game looks rather appetising and equally hard to predict any of the games. We make our first visit to Rubus Law for Aberdeen Grammar against Marr, but that's your look at BT National 1 for this week.